Right now we're going to talk about LinkedIn. If you were to look up LinkedIn and Wikipedia, you would see that Wikipedia defines LinkedIn as a business-oriented social networking service. This particular site was actually founded in December of 2002 and it was publicly launched in May of 2003. Primarily, it is a service that is used by professional individuals who desire to network. LinkedIn is one of those sites that has a variety of usages. And so what I'd like to do at this particular point is sign up for LinkedIn in terms of getting you to do that. I've already created an account for myself, so what I'm going to do is actually sign in. The focus of this tutorial is to get you to personally brand your LinkedIn profile. And that will give you the opportunity to reach out to a group of individuals that you would like to work with in a specific type of company or for a specific type of customer. One major focus of the LinkedIn profile that was talked about by LinkedIn itself is to make sure that you also focus on the different aspects of personal branding that you can use in order to enhance your visibility on the LinkedIn site. Now when you hear me talk about personal branding what I'm basically asking you about is how do you want potential employers to think and feel when they hear your name? How do you want them to think about the work or the professional services or products that you provide? And so in this particular tutorial, we want to talk about ways for you to display or promote that message and to make sure that it is consistent throughout your LinkedIn profile. The information provided here can be used by anyone who's just getting started with creating your LinkedIn profile. So the first thing that I'm going to do is go over and I'm going to highlight profile and I'm going to click it. On this particular page you'll notice that a couple of things occur sometimes people make endorsements for you and so you get a pop-up at the top in this case I'm going to click X to close it and it will pop up again a little bit later on if I log back into this site but to go ahead and move forward one of the things that I want to focus on here is the fact that you need to make sure that on the LinkedIn site you can come up with putting a picture that actually represents the name on your particular profile the picture that you decide to add should actually be a professional image. More specifically, the image that you choose should represent the industry that you would like to be known for or the occupation that you would like to work in. One of the guidelines that I typically give adult professionals is for them to analyze the websites of the people who are vying for the exact same position that they are in order to get some type of idea of the kind of image that they should have in their profile. To take it a step further, if you happen to create other social media networks that have professional information on them such as Twitter or a professional business Facebook page, it is highly recommended that you use the same image in order for you to get that brand or to promote that same image that represents your brand to the people who would like to work with you. This actually makes you recognizable. What's even interesting is the fact that most people don't think about what they should put inside this particular area for their headline. It should be something that gets people's attention. It should actually serve your brand well, meaning that it should include keywords that allow you to be visible when a potential employer searches for someone with your skill set. Also, the headline is a great place for you to add in information that causes people to think and feel about you in a specific way. Again, you're actually trying to promote your brand. Now, one of the things that I want to say is that whatever you put in this area shows up when someone does a LinkedIn search. So let's turn our attention up here to the very top of this navigation area. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the advanced hyperlink so that I can do a search on LinkedIn. But what I want you to notice is 
if someone goes and they type in a specific set of keywords, in this case I'm going to type in a phrase, a key phrase, so I'm going to type in social media, and I'm not going to filter it, I'm just going to go with whatever information pops up. At the bottom here I'm going to click on, before I do let me change one thing, I was going to click on search, but let me come over here to the right. Over here for relationship, depending upon how you want to search for information, that will actually show what's checked and it will affect what comes up in your search. So if you look at first degree connections, these are people that you have a direct connection with and those are your contacts. When you look at second connections, this is your second degree connections and they are the contacts of your first degree contacts. When you look at your third degree connections, third degree connections are your second degree contacts. contacts. And with that being said, I'm going to check on third degree as well, plus everyone else on the LinkedIn platform who comes up with the phrase social media in their profile. The purpose of this is just to show you the information that shows first. So I'm going to click on search and what I want to point out is based on the results that come back, the information that you're typically seeing here is a reflection of what the individual has in their particular profile. So whatever you're putting at the top, so let's scroll down a little bit, let's take a look at Wally Klein here. He says he's looking for more leads, he's looking to get more customers calling, and so that's the information that shows in this area. So what I'm trying to say is make sure that you're careful about the information that you display in the top of your headline area because it is the first thing that someone notices and it helps them to determine whether or not you are relevant to the type of individual they are searching for. As we scroll down further we get into what we have as the background summary area. Now what you can do to edit this area is to make sure that you click on edit. When this pops up it gives you the opportunity to go in and click this pencil so that you can modify the information that's shown here. One thing that I want to say is that you want to make sure that the information that you place here it should be value driven for the potential employer that you would like to work with. Although your name is on this LinkedIn profile, the LinkedIn profile is not about you. It's really about what you can do for the potential employers that you would like to work with. Now secondly, at the top you'll notice that you placed your name here in the top and in the headline area you provided information about your professional brand and with that anything underneath this area for example in the summary area moving on down the LinkedIn page should actually support the information that you put in your headline so in this particular case one of the things that I want to point out again is to make sure that you give some type of story that explains the type of problems that you're able to solve, talk about the actions you're able to take in terms of how you can help a potential customer, and then discuss the results that they can expect from working with you. You do want to make sure that you optimize this area. And what I mean by optimize is you want to make sure that you're using keywords that reflect your brand. Those keywords should reflect the needs of the potential employer that you want to work with because if they don't, they won't feel that you're a good fit or a good candidate for the position or the opportunity that may, they may have available. Now this is going to be a side note, just an extra piece of information. So in this particular case, I'm going to go ahead at the top and I'm going to click on Save and Exit. Now one thing that I want to say is before you come down and start making any type of modifications in your profile, for example, if you already have a profile set up, I recommend always exporting a PDF copy of it. So what you can do is up here by the edit key, hover over the arrow. So I'll move up there again, I hover over the arrow, and what you're going to do is you're going to click export to PDF. This will give you a nice, clean, professional looking copy of your PDF file. I'm going to place this on my desktop, and I'm going to click on save. And what I'll do is open this up so you'll get a general idea of the information that's present. 
I highly recommend this just in case you want to go back and restore parts of your profile or restore majority of what was there before you made any type of changes at all. So I'm going to click on X to close that because like I said it captures all the information that you have in your profile from top to bottom. However, if you have any type of visuals or things of that nature, it doesn't keep that. And what I mean by that is more like rich text media, like publications, presentations, things of that nature. So in this instance, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to have you take a look at going in and adding different types of rich media to support the information of a specific section. So in the summary area you were supposed to tell a story that allowed your skills to resonate with the potential employer. Furthermore, it's not good enough for you to tell them with all this text. What can help to evidence your skill is for you to come in and add in what we call rich media. And there are several different types of rich media that you can use to support whatever it was that you shared in this area to reflect that you really are skilled with a specific type of credential or to provide some type of social proof, some type of virtual, virtual proof that you are who you say you are. So in this case, you'll notice that for myself, based on the social media that I wanted to be known for, I came in in this case and I talked about Twitter. Over on the right side, I also provided information about my skills with Microsoft PowerPoint. And that was because over here I put a bullet in to just basically state that I have Microsoft Office software skills. Further down, I also noted that I teach technology classes. So for example, if you're looking here in this area, I talk about the fact that I've taught uh, various Apple products and the software that runs on them. And furthermore, I've also taught some technology classes. And so here there's evidence to show a schedule that people can click in order to get more information about the classes that I do run. And then I've gone here and I've added in a PowerPoint presentation that just shows that, and I'm sorry, this isn't a PowerPoint presentation, this is a video that shows that I know how to use certain features of Microsoft Word that you might not see uh, every single day. So what I'm going to do is I want to click on this first one over here for Twitter just to give you an idea of what I mean by adding in rich media to help tell your story because you do want to provide visual evidence. So I'm going to click on this and when I do you'll see that I've also put in some guiding text to help the users realize that I want them to click. I do this because oftentimes I discover that people aren't familiar with what it is that they need to do if you don't tell them what they need to do. So in this case you can see that I have a YouTube video and if I were to click it it's going to start playing the video from YouTube site. And so in this particular case I'm going to just pause it but that shows them that this information is linked back to YouTube and all I wanted to do is just provide visual evidence that hey here's proof using my voice that I know how to do some of these things. And so in this case I'm going to click on X to close out and it returns me to the main screen. If you have an interest in being able to add some of this information to support your profile, I highly recommend that you go in and click on Edit. And in this area, if you decide that you want to add in rich media to provide evidence, move your mouse over here and you're going to get two options. One is when you click on this particular icon you can either upload a file or you can add a link. I love to add a link because it actually promotes the other uh, social media sites that I have and furthermore it also shows without me saying it that you are skilled with using technology which is a big issue for the older generation so for instance, instead of walking into a particular job interview or telling the client that, hey, I have technology skills, why not just say it in a subtle manner and just let the technology speak for itself? So in this case, if you want to, you can click on Add Link. And what happens is you can add in a web link to a specific type of resource. And YouTube, I'm sorry, LinkedIn has done a really nice job of trying to basically guide you to give you some idea of what type of links are acceptable. So in this case you can add in videos, you can add in images you've created, documents, presentations, and more. Also over here to the right, this link by clicking it 
it'll give you an idea of what else you can upload into LinkedIn as well as the different providers that LinkedIn accepts content from. So this is opened up. I'm going to enlarge it. And when I move down, you can see that they accept images, audio, video, presentations, and, and more. And furthermore, I'm going to just delve into presentations just to show you that, you know, hey, they accept presentations from Prezi, Scribd, as well as SlideShare. And then if you were clicking on video providers, YouTube is one that's very well known, but you can see LinkedIn has a very long list of different providers that they accept content for. And obviously, YouTube is one of those. Now LinkedIn considers the next section to be more of an intermediate skill. So for example, we're going to go to a section that's called Skills and Endorsements. And I'm going to move down a little bit further. And in this case, this is the area. Skills and Endorsements gives you the ability to add in up to 50 different skills. I highly recommend that the skills that you add in here reflect what's hot in the market for today. And furthermore, these skills should reflect what you want to be professionally known for. So if I were to click on edit, and if I were looking in this particular area, if I found that there was a skill that I no longer wanted to be known for, then I could come in and I could click on the X and it would cause that particular skill to disappear from my profile. I'm going to click on cancel. The other thing that I want to say is that when people go in and endorse you for a skill, you get to see their picture by their profile. So in this particular case, I can hover over an area and you can see that information present. If I move down a little bit more, you can see that for passion for success, then you can see who's endorsed me for that. Obviously, if the person doesn't have a profile image, you won't see that information. Now, what I want to do is to be able to show you that you also have the opportunity to go in and you can click on a particular person's profile. And with this, you have the option of going in and looking at what they have and you can give them credit for a particular item or a particular skill so that others know that you recommend them and that you endorse the fact that you know hey they really can do this so let me see if I can actually click on a couple of these uh, in this particular instance let me see if I can select someone's picture by just clicking and then using that to verify their skill set So let me just go in right quick so in this case I'm going to choose Pam's site and I want to visit her location so I'm going to click on her name this is going to jump into her profile what I want to quickly show you is that if you want to endorse a person LinkedIn gives you the option most of the time by giving you this pop-up so if you go to their profile LinkedIn gives you this pop-up LinkedIn selects the skills that they're asking you to market them for and if you find that there's something they don't list then you can actually click and LinkedIn will let you start typing something in there in this case I don't want to add anything in, in her profile so I'm going to click on X but what I do want to do is move further down her profile so that I can endorse her for something that she may have listed so on her profile if I look down a little bit further I'll notice that uh, she has something with customer communication and I see that she has 19 other skills so I'm going to click on C and one of the things that I want to say is if you do want to endorse a person, let's say I wanted to endorse her for technical support, I could just hover over and I could click it and it'll give her that endorsement and then instantly it's going to place my picture beside her name. Also, if she has a skill that she wants to be known for like marketing, I can verify that yes, she does have that skill set. So by clicking on that plus sign, now my picture is going to show and it gives her an uptick by one. If you decide that someone you gave an endorsement for no longer deserves it, you can go back and click it and it will remove it. And you can see it went down by one. But I do know she has it, so I'm going to click it. Now she gets the uptick and she gets credit for having that skill set, at least by me. So with that being stated, skills and endorsement can actually be a reflection to people viewing your profile that, hey, this is an area that someone has a skill in. Now, although I haven't reached this yet in my own particular profile, whenever I hit 99 for a particular skill, it's going to show 99, and it's going to max out at that particular level. However, if you decide that you want to see how many people have endorsed an individual for a skill, then obviously you can move your mouse over the triangle and click, and it'll tell you 
how many people have endorsed that person for training. So you have the opportunity to see that. So I'm going to click on X and that's going to remove that particular piece. Another area that can affect your branding is recommendations. Recommendations are like personal testimonials and to me they seem to be much stronger than endorsements and that's because a person literally has to take time to write and inform people what it is that you did for them and they can talk about the impact that it had so in this particular case if you move down the screen you'll notice that for recommendations if you click on this particular pencil you'll notice that you can see the recommendations that were received and in my particular case I don't always show all of the recommendations that I received and one of the reasons is sometimes they do have some major um, typos or there could be some phrases, chunks of phrases that are missing and so I don't show them. Another reason that I may not have it visible on my profile is just that it may not be a part of my personal brand that I want to be known for right then. So in this particular case, uh, LinkedIn does not have to be your resume. In fact, LinkedIn recommends that you don't show uh, your profile in the same manner that you would in your resume. And for me, with that being said, I prefer to be known for specific areas and therefore I want to make sure that the recommendations that show on my profile are a reflection of the work that I've done for what I want to be known for right now. So over on the right side, when it talks about manage visibility, this gives you the ability to click on that particular link so that you can go in and manage the recommendations that actually are visible. Let's say that you want to be recommended. You can click on Ask to be recommended. And by doing that, LinkedIn gives you the opportunity to request a recommendation for someone who has experienced your services. And typically what I would say to that is that you make sure that you have a conversation with the individual. Let them know ahead of time that you would like to receive a recommendation for them if they are satisfied with the work that they received from you. Oftentimes, we may not collect payment. However, it can be just as rewarding to get someone to give you a recommendation, which actually pays in the form of social capital as opposed to receiving financial capital. So in this particular case, I'm going to say, okay, I taught for, let's see, let's say that I taught as a help desk administrator at this location. And if I did work for a particular individual, I would just type in their name. However, LinkedIn says that you have to make sure that whosever name you type is a first degree connection for you. And you can see that by me typing slowly, it gives me some recommendations of who it is that I might be trying to enter. In this case, I don't have anyone that I really want to enter. I really want to go down a little bit further and, and talk about this create your message. Because we're focused on you having an impact on how you want potential employers to think and feel about you. It is absolutely essential that the subject of this particular message from LinkedIn be a reflection of the keywords or the profession that you really want to be known for. So can you recommend me for, in this case I, to I chose Help Desk. And in this particular case, I might say something like, I might add a dash and talk about a particular project. Um, I might say computer installation project, just to draw their memory so they'll know what it's about. And then the second thing is, it will be nice for you to let them know the keywords that you want to be known for um, ahead of time. So that's a conversation that should take place. Uh, well before you're getting to this particular point and here it's nice if they could actually talk about the services they received from you the experience that they had from those services and what the outcome was that actually provides value to those who are looking at your LinkedIn profile and it'll also give you a bump in visibility because you're getting credit for, for those keywords coming from the people who have given testimonials in this case recommendations for the excellent services that they received from you. So that's one of the reasons to make sure that you do get those recommendations. And if you're trying to think about some different individuals that you can get these recommendations from, I would highly recommend that you think about, you know, volunteer agencies that you've worked for, 
colleagues, employees, um, employers that you've done work for, uh, just a host of different individuals, even customers, and just get them to give that essential feedback you need to boost your brand visibility. Now it goes without saying that one of the biggest questions I typically get is how often should someone use a keyword? I can tell you that typically if you were creating a type of writing, the percentage of keywords should typically range between 2% to 4%. And when I say keywords, I mean you're using that same exact word over and over and over again, and yet you're trying not to do so more than 2% to 4.5% of the time. And so with that being stated, on your LinkedIn profile, it should be optimized so that you're using those keywords for that profession uh, that you want to be known for throughout every single section of your LinkedIn profile, but it needs to make sense when you're doing it. And what I mean by that is you shouldn't be just inserting keywords just to be doing so. For the profile to be optimized, it needs to be set up so that when people look at your page, they understand why you said the information that you did and that you don't just hone in on the same keyword over and over and over again. For example, um, saying something like, I want to be known as a social media strategist teaching social media. You know, that's just insane. So at least for me, that is, that's not something that I would re recommend that you actually do. And so with that being stated, just make sure that you put your keywords throughout the different sections, put it in your summary, put it throughout your different experiences. Uh, when you get to different courses, incorporate the keywords there. Looking at skills and endorsements, if you want to be known for help desk administration or social media, for example, include those keywords because the more you do, the more of a boost that you'll get as it relates to your visibility on LinkedIn. And that's just one of the factors that can enhance uh, your chances of being found on the LinkedIn site itself. So with all of that, another area that I want to take a look at is referred to as uh, being able to go in and create a unique URL. Now to create your unique URL, one of the things that I'll say is that right here for the LinkedIn.com slash IN slash Letitia Alford, I know that I customized this number one, but if yours has random numbers and dashes inside of it, chances are that is not a customized uh, URL or a customized web address. To customize this, what you should do is click on Edit. And by doing that, it opens up this particular area so that you can now go in and click on Edit beside that public URL. And one thing that I want to say, because I do hear this a lot, I want to say that this address that you're seeing right here refers to your public profile. That has nothing to do with the information that's shown on the LinkedIn platform. What's shown on the LinkedIn platform will remain visible to the individuals who have access to that information on LinkedIn. For example, anyone who knows your first name and your last name have the ability to see every single section on your LinkedIn profile that is visible. And so you can't turn that off. Now, with that being said, uh, that does not include certain group images, or, I'm sorry, certain group icons, but I'm really speaking about turning off specific sections. You can't turn that off on the LinkedIn site, but you can on the public area. So this URL address is for the public profile only. Click on Edit. And when this comes up, you'll notice instantly over to the right, that this setup is specifically for major search engines and the examples that LinkedIn give here are actually like Google, Yahoo, and Bing. Now one of the things that I want to point out, my public profile is visible, but I have selected and chosen what parts of my profile are visible on the public sites such as Google, Yahoo, or Bing. And you'll notice that there are other areas that I don't have checked. And because they're not checked, they don't show to the public, however, that information is visible to individuals on the LinkedIn site. Now, I wanted to talk to you about the public profile URL. When you look at this particular section, you'll notice that this is my information that I customized. You can click on Customize Your Public URL, and you now have the opportunity to brand yourself using 5 to a maximum of 30 characters. With that being said, if 
I want it to be known for social media and it was available I could put in Letitia Alford social media to brand myself and if it was available LinkedIn would give it to me just like right now I get a check mark that confirms hey this is available now if I wanted that I could actually set that as my custom URL it certainly makes it a lot easier so that if I wanted to use that public profile web address as my web address on a resume or on my business card for LinkedIn then when people look at my LinkedIn address instantly they should recognize that I want to be known for social media and that's because I have branded myself with that information here's another one let's say that I want to be known for Excel and more specifically Excel pivot tables and that may be rather long but if that's available as it looks like it is here then instantly someone looks at that and they recognize that hey she looks like she specializes in the Excel pivot tables so what I'm saying to you is you do have the opportunity to brand yourself with something else other than your first name your last name uh, I would highly recommend that you get rid of those random numbers and with this you can change the URL every six months provided it is available and so that's something to think about so I'm going to click on cancel uh, and in this instance if you want to see what your public profile looks like you can click on this link over here to the right click view your public profile and you will see it looks very different than your LinkedIn profile however it does show you what you have checked off that you don't mind being visible to the public so that's pretty huge when you look at that particular area at this point I'm going to click on profile and return back to the main LinkedIn area another way to brand yourself is to make sure that if you have any other social networking sites that you have a website a blog or any other type of social networking area such as Twitter then you can come in here and share that information by making sure that you click on edit and in this particular case I'm going to want to edit the contact info so I'm going to click on edit contact info and you do have the choice of sharing information with the people who are your first degree connections so in this particular case I don't have anything that I want to add other than my email address and as I move down here the one thing that I want to share is this is also visible to every person on the LinkedIn site so you can brand yourself through the Twitter social networks you can brand yourself if you're on the WeChat platform in this case I want to brand myself using different blogs or websites that I have available so I'm going to click on website I'm going to click on the edit button and what you're going to notice is when I click on this first drop down LinkedIn gives you the ability to share a personal website a company website a blog I'm going to skip RSS feed I don't see too many people using that right now but I'm going to skip it and then the latter one is a portfolio and to me the LinkedIn site in and of itself is a portfolio but yet this is another way for you to get visibility so what I would recommend is that you choose other because if I choose portfolio you see how I only get three different uh, two different columns whereas if I go back and select other now I have three different columns this other column the second column is preferred because it gives you the opportunity to optimize your LinkedIn profile by getting the biggest bang for your buck using some keywords so with this I'm going to click on cancel and by doing that I'm just trying to preserve what I originally had in here so I don't lose it but one thing that I will say in this case for my one of the websites I have that's called up by one when people click on that link it's going to automatically navigate to that specific page and it's going to show them that extra website so they can learn additional information about me so in this case I would recommend that you go in and you share that information so that it gives a broader perspective about who you are and your professional brand here the next place I'm going to look at actually deals with being able to find different channels and influencers so at the top of your LinkedIn area if you highlight and hover over interests here you'll notice that there are different areas such as uh, Pulse if you click on Pulse this is the publication service for LinkedIn and more specifically LinkedIn comes in up here and it points out that you can get relevant news and different types of information that should be very pertinent to your industry or your occupation 
And so what you can do here is that you can stay informed just by being on the LinkedIn platform and you can grow your knowledge as it relates to your field by subscribing to different channels and following different thought leaders who have an influence in their particular field so that you can grow your knowledge base about your particular specialization or your specific industry. In this case, you'll notice that this young lady pops up, Stephanie Smith, and I notice that she's an executive consultant and coach at this particular company. If I decided that I wanted to follow her and receive her uh, information, I could click on the plus sign to follow and then I would be able to get her data. Um, but in this case, if I really don't want to follow her and I change my mind, I can go back and click unfollow and now I can notice that I'm no longer following her anymore. So LinkedIn does give you that opportunity to come in here and see information for different individuals. It gives you a snippet of some of the things that they've written and you can also see that they've tagged it with specific areas, specific industries um, that you can actually review in order to get more information. So that's one of the ways that you can stay informed through your news and if you want to see um, the top posts that are available as it relates to Pulse, then you just come up here and click on the top posts. And so in this particular case, you can see the top post for this for today, or you can really hover over here and see the top post for this week. You can see the ones for all time or the ones that are recent. And again, if you see something that you like from an influencer or a thought leader that you would love to hear from more often, then again, all you have to do is click on the plus to be able to follow them. If you want to discover more news and insights, so I'm going to click on discover here. And if you find that there are other individuals that you would like to follow on the LinkedIn platform, you can see in this case LinkedIn has made recommendations and you can just click on the plus sign to be able to follow those particular individuals. So that's um, one of the things that you're able to do. As you scroll down, you'll get the opportunity to see other channels that are available underneath this Pulse section and you can pick and choose the ones that you think are relevant for you. You'll notice here that publishers actually provide news such as Forbes which writes extremely great articles. The ones that I'm subscribed to have a check mark. If I decided I didn't want to follow them again, all I had to do was hover and I could unfollow that particular publisher. If I want to follow one that I'm not, then I can click on the plus and then I'd be able to receive their information automatically as well. So that's one of the ways again to Find relevant channels, relevant influencers, so that you can grow your knowledge about your field and stay up to date on the latest trends and information. LinkedIn is also giving you the ability to follow companies. So in this case, you can hover over interests and you can select companies. By clicking on companies, LinkedIn gives you the ability to be able to again learn from other industry leaders and more specifically the ones that are also deemed some of the best available um, on the LinkedIn platform itself. You will be able to get these updates in your LinkedIn feed on the home page if you decide that you want to follow a specific company. In this case, you can just click on home and you'll be able to see that um, in this instance you're receiving information from different areas and I'm going to click on following so that gives you the opportunity to see the companies that I am following as well as the publishers that I'm following also and if there's a company that you're looking for up here at the top if you click on advanced what you have the ability to do is you can come inside here and for the the companies you can search for them on this LinkedIn site so we go here and click on in this case you click on advanced and so I'm going to click on companies and when I do that, I'm able to look at, you know, over 3.7 million companies registered on the LinkedIn platform. And so you can search companies up here to be able to find the kind of company that you want. So if you're looking for, well, Hewlett Packard just automatic, automatically popped up. If I wanted to click on that to see their company page on the LinkedIn platform, I can see it. And then depending upon what other information they have available, like in this case, careers, I'd be able to see uh, what opportunities that they also decided to share on their particular LinkedIn page. So again, this is another way to get information from companies that you might like to pursue future opportunities with on the LinkedIn platform. 
Another wonderful feature on the LinkedIn site allows you to actually find and join different LinkedIn groups based on your professional interests and it allows others who see that particular branding on your LinkedIn platform to know that you're really serious about your industry and you want to stay up to date with what's going on. So in this particular case I can hover over interests and I can select groups and what you'll find is that LinkedIn gives you the opportunity to register for 50 groups. Now I have 52 up here and that's because subgroups aren't counting towards my LinkedIn groups and more specifically in this particular case if I had the ability to just go in and search for more groups I could really come up here at the top I could click on the drop down I could select groups and then you can search for certain groups based on specific topics like social media and you'll notice that as I type different group recommendations come up but I'm going to hit the enter key and when this information comes up on the page you can see groups is selected and that's because LinkedIn has um, those groups with those keywords and so one thing that's really neat is that you can see how many uh, people are very active um, in the group discussions and you can see how many members they have and so that's really good information so with that if you're interested in trying to join a group then you can actually click on view to be able to see the group itself and then you can ask to join that group some of them are open which means that you can join them immediately and others you have to get permission meaning that the group moderator or the person in control of allowing you into the group uh, would have to approve your ability to be able to gain access to participate in discussions LinkedIn encourages you to build your network on the LinkedIn profile for instance they want you to be able to build relationships with other individuals and to use that opportunity uh, to further your professional career or whatever your professional interest may be and so over here on the left side I'm going to click on this drop down and you can see that we can search for people and more specifically uh, we can type in the kind of people that we're looking for maybe we're trying to find a job that deals with um, chemical uh, engineer and so we're looking for something that pops up with people that may have that in their profile so you can find other people like that and then click on enter and what you'll notice is it'll give you a list of people with some of those terms in their profile now what you'll notice here is that these words don't always come back in the manner that we desire for example here I see chemical here I see engineer and so a lot of times um, I'm looking at this number which in this case is half a million and I'll go back and I'll put the phrase in quotation marks to try and filter what it is that I'm looking for and in this case when I press enter I can quickly see that by putting it in quotation marks it narrowed from one half million from a half million down to over 76,000 which is significantly less but still way more than what I desire but the overall goal here is to just say if you want to grow and build your network if you want to reach out to different colleagues different people you want to do business with maybe even friends and family then you have the ability to do that by looking inside the LinkedIn network for people who have the terms that you're looking for LinkedIn has another section and this one is under connection so in this case you would select you'd highlight connections and then you would click find alumni and by clicking find alumni you now have the opportunity to grow your network by reaching out to connect with different people who are actually from your alma mater and so with that you can actually use these university pages so that you can find different people to network with because obviously you have something in common there is a host of information that you're able to get from this uh, more specifically is you can look for people based on the dates that they attended that particular school you have the opportunity to actually see uh, when the information comes back where those individuals work you can find out what those people do if you click on this particular area area here you can find out by filtering uh, what a specific group of people studied what they're really good at and furthermore you can find out who's actually employed those people so LinkedIn gives you a host of information that can be very useful in helping you to find your next opportunity so again you can use your um, alumni in order to reach out to network with them and that can again help you further your business goals so with this I hope that you've received some valuable information that can help you personally brand yourself on the LinkedIn platform and I hope that you use this opportunity to uh, learn the basics of 
getting started with the LinkedIn site and spent some time really crafting and fine-tuning the message that allows you to connect with potential employers so that they have the opportunity to know if you're a good fit for them potentially and they can reach out for you for the uh, reach out to you for those opportunities that you may desire to have if you have any questions please feel free to reach out to me thanks and have a wonderful day